Hey guys, welcome to another lesson with Mr. Rias. Today we are going to continue our lesson on Arduino using Tinkercad. I know it's supposed to be meeting up face to face today, but right in the classroom to try out the actual Arduino and the components. But because of the um, extended safety uh, measures due to COVID, okay, we need to continue our ECCA until. Um, for their notice all right so um don't worry i'm sure we have a chance to meet up soon hopefully when things are better so let's continue to this lesson okay um hopefully i can uh you guys have more success in getting online on to tinkercad uh those of you still having problems you can uh, let me know later all right or during uh the first part during our zoom session so i can uh, get it all settled up for you okay uh, last week we had some uh, lessons using um, our LEDs and our sun sensors. Okay, but today we are going to be using a light sensor or a photo resistor sensor. Okay, for those students in P4 and above, okay, we are done light in science. You can see that we actually have light sensors to use with our data logger. So. This is uh, practically the same thing, it's just that we are actually building uh, the whole setup ourselves. Okay, to read information from a light sensor and then uh, to actually uh, do something with it. Okay, uh, for most of you, when you go to school early in the morning, when it's still dark, you can see the street lamps are on, or even during uh, the night time, you can see uh, once the sun set, the lights will, the street lamps will automatically. Uh, switch on and you can see that not all the street lamps will be switching on at the same time of uh, the day okay because the sun sets at different times as the year go by okay uh, different times a year okay so what happens is that some of the street lamps in Singapore they have a light sensor to detect the amount of light uh, which is measured in lux that's the units for light and if there's not enough light and it gets too dark, it will automatically switch on the street lamps. That's why you can see that on some days when there are heavy storms or it's raining very heavily and it's very dark and cloudy and there's not enough light, some of the street lamps will be automatically switched on because the light sensors are telling them that it's too dark. So it's time to switch on the light. So that's what we're going to do today. So enough with the jibber jabber. So let's start with our project today. So let's create a new circuit first. Now we'll tinker cat. Okay. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to be taking my Arduino and my breadboard. Okay, so my breadboard is here. Let me move it and oh where was my Arduino just now? Okay, uh yeah, so it's my Arduino, okay. So let me arrange it a little bit so it's easy for you to see. Let me make it a little bigger bigger for you. Okay, so I hope that's better. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is in our project, I am going to use a light sensor. If it gets too dark, and then we will switch on our LED light. But let's say it's in the morning, the sun rises, there's a lot of light, then our LED light will auto automatically switch off. Okay. So what we're going to do now first is I'm going to set up the LED light bulb first. So uh, let's go and oops, what am I doing? Okay, I'll just uh, delete. Oops, oh, sorry. I will uh, remove this first. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take out an LED. Oh, where's my LED? Okay here and I'm going to choose blue this time around because it's my favorite color of course and also we have been using red a lot of times and I'm going to use a resistor for my LED so I'm going to use a 220 uh, ohm okay LED and I'm going to uh, put it here so I'm going to be connecting my resistor straight away to my ground here okay and 
What I'm going to do is I am going to be connecting my ground and my first to my breadboard. Oops. Sorry. Uh, okay, and I am going to choose black for my for my ground and for my five volt. Okay, I'm going to be connecting to my breadboard here. Okay, and I'm going to use red for my. Okay, so uh. Okay, so once I connect to these two rows here, you can see this whole line here on the breadboard becomes my ground, my negative, and the whole uh, line here on the breadboard become my positive, and for. The other leg of my LED, I am going to be connecting it to my pin 9, which is our PWM pin. Just like what we did with the uh, last week with our potential meter, right? You can see the blinking light. So that uh, this is a uh, modulating. Uh, okay, let's choose purple for the LED. Okay, our power. Uh, Okay, our power modulation. Okay, for our LED. All right. So this LED part is has been uh, is already done. So we're going to do now. We are going to set up our light sensor or our photo resistor. So which one is it? Okay. So if you scroll down below, you will see this photo resistor. This is our light sensor. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to name it light sensor. Because it's easier for us to remember light sensor instead of a photoresistor. Okay, so I'm going to put my light sensor here. Okay, and I will need a resistor now. Okay, so this resistor I will leave it at the default. Okay, 1 kilo ohm. Okay, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it a bit so that it's easy for me to put it on the breadboard here. Okay. So, um, on one leg, I am going to connect it to my ground. So, I'm going to change this to black. This connects to the ground. And on the other leg, I am going to... Uh, okay, let me just move this down a bit. Okay, over here. And on the other leg here, I am going to connect this to the positive. Okay. And uh, in the middle here, that goes to this leg and where the resistor is as well, in this whole row, what I'm going to do is I am going to use my analog pin A0. Okay, so I'm going to use this part. And I'm going to connect it to A0. And let's give this a green so it's easy for us to see. Okay, so let's recap what we have done so far before we start doing our code. We have set up an LED, okay, that has one of the, as a cathode leg, goes to, with a resistor of 220 ohm into my ground, my negative, okay. And at the same time, on the positive, on the anode leg of your LED, I connect it to pin, digital pin 9, okay. And I have a photo resistor here or light sensor with a resistor of uh, one kilo ohm. Okay, you must make sure it's one kilo ohm here. And on the uh, one of the terminals of the photo or the light sensor, I connect it to the ground. And at the end of the other, uh, at the end of the re resistor, I connect it to the positive. And on the other terminal of my photo resistor, I connected it all the way to my analog pin A0. Okay, so just make sure the setup you have is what you see here. Okay, once you are okay, we are going to do our, our code. Alright, so let's start with the code. Okay, so by default, you can see there is this uh, LED setup here. I can just put it in my bin. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I will need to 
set up a variable for my light sensor first so let's create a variable okay because we have nothing for this light sensor so let's name it light sensor easy for us to remember okay so what I'm going to do is I am going to first set my light sensor and because my light sensor is on analog pin A0 I'm going to write it down I'm going to edit this values that I'm reading from my A0 pin okay okay so um, I'm going to find my input which is going to be reading our analog pin A0 and I am going to be putting it here so if you want you can put some comments for you so you know what you're doing so it's always good to add some comments to your code so that when you do you see your code next time you will know this is to read values of our light sensor from analog pin A0 okay uh, okay so it's up to you whether you write comments or not so it's always good to write okay so once I got this pin, what I'm going to do is I am going to print this value okay, to our serial monitor so that we can read our serial monitor. Remember last week when we do our rotation of our potential meter knob, then we can see the values coming out of the serial monitor. You can actually do this too when we are using our Arduino IDE to program. Okay, so... Um, we're going to print this value so we're going to print we are going to print the values of the light sensor okay so we're just going to click click the variable put the light sensor there so i'm going to set the light sensor to be values that i get from the analog pin okay and then i'm going to write down the values okay so if you are to run it now the serial uh, monitor okay and Okay, hold on. Eh? Let me, if I were to start the simulation now, and I will show you the serial monitor, you can see there's some values. How do I make it dark or light? So if I click here, you can see when I click the sensor, I can either make it as a lot of sunlight or dark. So then this is dark. This is bright. So you can see the value changes here. Okay, but it's not 0 to 255. You can see when it's very bright, it's 344. And it's very dark is 1017 okay uh, this led has not uh, brightened up or on or off because we have not done anything with the led yet so i'm going to stop the simulation okay so uh, what i'm going to do is i am going to do some uh, mapping okay so what i'm going to do is i am going to Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to send these values to this my LED so that when it's bright, this LED will switch off. When it's dark, this LED will switch on. Okay, so um, so let's do a set a pin to some values. Okay, but because I know that I'm using pin nine here. Okay, so pin nine. I'm going to set this pin nine and i want to set the values of light sensor but you can see just now the values is not zero to two five five so i need to do a bit of math just like last week with our potential meter okay so what i do is i am going to change the values of whatever readings i get from my light sensor and I'm going to change this value from 0 to 255 instead. Okay, so I'm going to change this to 255. And so whatever values I read from the light sensor, from the analog pin, I'm going to, whatever values that's coming in, I'm going to change it to 2, 0 to 255 instead. And I'm going to send these values to my uh, pin 9. Okay. Alright, so if you want, I can put some information here okay uh, use the analog values map to 0 to 255 send to LED okay to switch off or on okay 
all right if you don't want to write the comment it's fine okay so so far i've i've uh okay what i've done is i set the pin 9 okay to this all right and let's add one last part which is some wait time because we want to have at least a little bit of wait time okay and let's see our code is done okay so let's see what's happening first we are going to take any values from this photo resistor here this light sensor which we are going to be reading from this a0 pin and then uh, we are going to print out okay this is just for our monitoring to see whether the values are running okay and um, after that we are going to send these values to pin 9 because this is the one that controls our led light okay but at the same time we want the values instead of the analog values we want it to be from 0 to 255 okay so easy for us to uh, read it up and con convert it so we need to do some converting by using this map function under math and then we're just going to set a wait time of one second okay so and our code is done actually so let's see whether when we run it whether it works okay so uh, let's try now when we start our simulation okay so if i were to so now uh, let's click when we click our uh, light sensor you can see it's at night it's very dark okay so the light is on but let's say the sun is rising as the sun rises Okay, you can see the light switch off okay but let's say it gets evening gets dark okay when I the light will come back on okay so I can control the amount of light coming into the light sensor by moving this one here there's a lot of light the light will be off but when it's very dark this light will be on okay so this is just one example what you can do by switching off and on the light um, other things you can do maybe is like um, if you see in some house, uh, houses now they have a lot of um, internet of things I, uh, uh, peripherals in their houses so maybe I can change this instead, instead of using my LED maybe I can use if it's too bright during the day then I can run a a motor to bring down the blind maybe to to control the amount of light coming in so it's not so hot in my house okay or um, something like that all right so give this a try okay uh, there's one more thing i want you to take note of you can see that we have done the code in blocks but when we start doing our coding in our arduino ide you will see that uh, a lot of time we don't have the blocks inside the ide so what you can do is actually later on we can download this code and you see these are the blocks but if you were to check the text block code so you can see actually when you're doing the blocks they are typing out the c++ code that usually we do in our arduino uh, programming interface our ide okay so don't worry if you can't really understand this uh, c++ code but by doing the blocks you actually automatically doing the c++ code just like when we're doing our make code arcade when we are doing our blocks they're actually typing out our the javascript codes for us okay so when we set up the actual one we can just download this code and then just upload it to our arduino to real arduino and then uh, everything will work okay so uh, give this a try and Make sure you take some photos or your screenshots or your videos of your project and then upload it to SLS so that I can check it out as well. Alright, so until the next lesson, see ya!